I mean? It's Billy Gunn! Billy Gunn's the mystery trainer! What in the world is going on? Oh my god! What Greg earth? Lambert is back! And not a moment too soon! And the trainer, the trainer of Stephen Flodder, is none other than Billy Gunn! And Flodder owns PCW again! Yes! 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 But, but no, he was, but no, and no, but no, 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 no. And in the immortal words of Hannibal John Smith, I love it when a plan comes together. Stephen Flutter. Pete Seikow Sam, Stephen Flutter is not going to leave Preston. Stephen Flutter is once again the owner of PCW and the buyout era is over. Yeah. 
down. There is one other individual I'd like to mention. Well, it's a uh, returning Mustang, a Gregor Lambert. He's making a touching little speech, thanking the death for everything. He says he wants to mention someone else. Well, that there is. Rossi Rascal, I'm not sure if that's the person he met.
another opportunity. I guess you're talking about the Cruiserweight title tournament that's coming up that Philip qualified for and you didn't. Okay. Okay. All right, everybody deserves a second chance. You better not let me down. You're not just Cerberus. The last chance, this will do Cruiserweight title tournament qualifier. Whoever, Whoever wins that match is in the Cruiserweight title tournament. Well, one more thing. With a loser or draw that match, afterwards, I want you to publicly apologise to Philip Michaels face to face. Go, 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 AC Striker, everybody. Okay. Try again. Try again. I'll try again. That's not so. There's a gentleman who's been to the PCW since day one. There's a gentleman who I like to say is the conscience of PCW, the authority. In PCW. And this week, the little story on social media, he made a big announcement, quite like a shocking announcement. And you know, as far as I'm concerned, this guy is the greatest referee that PCW has ever had. Oh, 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 oh. Well done, Craig. And you're absolutely right. Alexander Price of the Lions. And also a head referee. Let's come out. And you know what? Yes, Greg, you are absolutely right. Absolutely right to honour this man. Price 
is the senior referee here. Some of the audience thinks a small but vocal minority of buyout fans. It's the only reason why you're still here, so I think you should take the bass out of your voice when you speak to me. Mark Alexander Price is a scumbag, plain and simple, always has been, always will be, and he's come out to disrespect Des Robinson. And the fact that he's complaining about getting hit with a steel chair, how many times did Mark Alexander Price, as referee in PCW over the past year, bend the rules, show bias towards the buyout? Basically turning that match between Stephen Flutter and Sheikh El Sham into a two-on-one handicap match when he was supposed to be the referee. And Des Robinson couldn't stand it. Des Robinson respects the rules, so Des Robinson snapped. And I, for one, am glad he did. Well, let me answer one of your questions. How many times has Mark Alexander Price done blah, blah, blah? Never. That's what I'd say. Well, never has he done that. The man knows the rules well enough. That's why he's senior official. You need to take those shades off, mate, because seriously, you're having trouble seeing reality. Des Robinson has announced his retirement from refereeing this week. It shocked us all. Des decided to hang up the stripes after a distinguished career. And let me tell you something, he is sick to the back teeth, as indeed we all are, of Mark Alexander Price. Arcadian, Arcadian you can see, still struggling with that rib injury we saw. What happened to him at the hands of CJ Banks? What happened to him at the hands of Sheikh El Sham? His battles with the buyout, but still, the space entity determined to compete here in the ring. I'm not sure whether that's smart or brave. Well, I don't know whether he's actually got ribs. I don't know the anatomy of I don't even know what sort of alien he is. I mean, he's clearly not 100%. Not only did CJ Banks put him in the crossface, clearly mocking our PCW champion, Joey Hayes, but also, also, took his mask off, selling the ultimate disrespect. Well, it was for the fans who had to potentially glimpse what was under that. What sort of hideous visage was under there? Arcadian was clear to compete this evening, but clearly that rib injury is flared up again at the hands of the merciless egomaniac in shirt and tie. You mean our senior referee? The man who brings a whistle to the ring, meaning that he's about the only person in PCW who can suck and blow at the same time. I'm oh, sorry, he's wound me up, yeah? My first night back on the job, and I don't want to have to deal with Mark Alexander Price. Oh. You know, Rossi Rascal comes out here, and he's respectful, 
and he asks, you know what, for something he deserves, a rematch with Big T. I give him an opportunity to earn it. AC Stryker comes out here. Clearly he's been stewing about what he did to Philip Michael. He asks for another opportunity. I'm willing to let bygones be bygones, give him a second chance. This guy, this guy comes out and disrespects the guy who's the absolute salt of the earth, most popular guy in the dressing room, Des Robinson. What am I supposed to do? It stops your favouritism, that's what I would say. There's no favouritism. Well, it won't make any difference. You do a match with Arcadian anyway. So how's that favouritism? Because you've got Des. Put, put Des as the ref, is that your problem? Yes, you've got junior referee Des Robinson in there. Are you still living in a time machine? Do you don't remember what happened last week? Last I, week? I haven't seen the paper. Uh, the paperwork that says he's been reinstated. Is any for anything like a junior referee? Look, your man lost to my man, and now my man owns the company again. It's that simple. And you're lucky to be here. Mark Alexander Price. He's a vicious individual. He's been erratic in terms of his in ring results here in PCW recently. Victory over AC Striker, but losses to Don Gatto and a very swift loss to a fired up man on a mission. That is Rossi Rascal. Yeah. 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 Brain really didn't have a chance there. I mean, he got blindsided yeah. by Rossi Rascal. Yeah. Well, he's lucky he's still employed as well, to be fair. Yeah. Isn't he? Well, the hell is that? He has a contract. Yeah. Oh, and look at that. He locks on. Well, I think uh, it's uh, like he's looking to end the career of Arcadian right now. Going after those injured ribs with the abdominal stretch, yeah. using the top rope, and Des Robinson, who, you know, he's taken so much mental abuse at the hands of Mark Alexander Price. And don't forget, the only reason as well that Des Robinson hit him with a chair was the fact that Mark Alexander Price put his hands on Des Robinson first. You forget about that. Well, he had no business yeah. either, man. Clothesline by Arcadian. Yeah. Crowd here chatting for Des. They're quite right too. The show of respect for a man who's refereed all the big matches here in PCW over nearly 10 years with the company. A great servant of PCW. But look yeah. at this, Arcadian getting up in a gory into the knee. I suppose you call that, would you call that gory to sleep, I suppose. I don't know. Price right now. Certainly isn't, but you can tell the alien being is not a hundred percent. As we said before, he's going for the crash landing. Price though, look at that again, using the turnbuckle what? to get him in the ribs. And look at that. Oh, Des Robinson spotted it. Des Robinson spotted Mark Alexander Price trying to use the middle ropes for leverage to pin Arcadian. He's wise to that, he's Des. All he did was kick his legs up in the air just to add that extra pressure. He didn't put them on the ropes. Arcadian missed the kick, but he takes Price down. Got almost like a one-legged powerbomb. Very innovative from this visitor from another world, but it's only a two. And you've got to wonder, does Arcadian have some sort of ability that he could be using his magic? Has he got some sort of otherworldly abilities or talents that he has in there? Has he got some sort of telekinesis? It looks like he's going to take flight like a comet right now. He goes for a oh, frog splash. Oh, and he landed on the knees. The injured ribs. The injured ribs. Price opportunistically and hits him with. Is this going to be the price is right? It is. Oh, no, wait a second. He, he's sitting up there for it now, I think. That is, that's the price is right. He hit him with the stomach breaker first. Then the price is right. One, two. Mark Alexander <laughs> Price beats Arcadian. Sickening. Ladies and gentlemen, your Oh, look at this. Insult to injury. Once again, Arcadian fights valiantly through the pain. Once again, a buyout member. And look at this. Oh, look at this. Des Robinson won't take any of Mark Alexander Price's. And look at this. Des is trying to get his hands off Price. Des Robinson's had it over Price. He shouldn't put his hands on an actual rat.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by the maestro, Philip Michael. Philip, thank you for talking to me. The last 12 months have been really tough for you. You've had a reoccurring knee injury. You then had to reluctantly join the buyout. And then more recently, AC Striker kicked you um, <laughs> when you were going for a handshake. What are your thoughts at this time? What are your plans for the future? To be honest with you, Graham, it's quite strange at the minute, um, as far as my mindset goes. You see, I've never had a mindset where I've cared so less. Okay. To a certain extent. Right. You see, after everything I went through last year, I had to join the buyout. I did my knee in repeatedly. I had to do the Sheik's dirty work. You know, like, there's literally no situation that people can put me in that I've not already been in. Okay. Even when it comes to the in-ring stuff, I've been in there with the best technicians. I've been in there with the biggest guys, the hardest hitters. You know, like, there's absolutely nothing anyone can do to me that's not already been done. Mm -hmm. And so for striker kicking me low, like he did, mm -hmm. to be honest, mate, it's another day in the office by this point. Right. <laughs> but men don't stay about it, he will get what's coming to him. And I have a handy receipt in, the, in my pocket, waiting for him, Wait, especially. Yeah. Um, and as far as 2020 goes, I feel like it's about time I finally get my hands on that cruiserweight gold. Fantastic. Fifth time lucky. So, later on, you're going to be taking on Brady Phillips. He's an incredible wrestler, a tough opponent. What are your thoughts about that? See, I'm talking all this about getting the cruiserweight gold, and I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself here because if I lose to Brady Phillips like tonight, as incredible as he is, where does that put me then? You know what I mean? So t tonight is definitely a must-win for me. You know, so I'm going in there. I know I know who he is very well. I've scouted a lot of his stuff on online, and even though I've never stepped in the ring with him personally. I know what he brings to the table. I know what I bring to the table. I can guarantee we're going to put on one hell of a show for that crowd tonight. Excellent. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined by Brady Phillips. Brady, welcome back to PCW. You've been with us before. You conquered Dave Graves in an incredible match. Later on, you are facing the maestro, Philip Michael. The maestro. What are your thoughts about your match? You know, uh, Philip, Philip Michael, he's, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of Philip Michael, a lot of talk of Philip Michael, and, but he's just another one of these up and coming kids. Yeah, they're all gonna, they're all gonna hit their peak, and they're gonna hit their peak tonight when Brady Phillips smashes his skull in. Okay. Um, one thing I really do want to ask is, um, the kilt that you wear, what's, what's the meaning behind that? You don't sound Scottish? Have you got any Scottish ancestry, or...? Gold tie. Yes, this what, gift. What's the meaning um, in this gold tie? Uh, it was a gift from a friend, um, from a friend. trying to look smart for a gift. Do you want to come here with your funny questions or do you want to interview Brady Phillips? Because I can be a nefarious, horrible, spiteful person. Okay. But if you want to keep it professional and you want to ask me the question, do you want to ask me what I'm going to do to Philip Michael? I'm going to do exactly what I tell you to Philip Michael. I'm going to grab his skull, I'm going to take it down to the mat, and I'm going to stomp on Philip Michael's head. Thank you. Well, while watching PCW TV, during my enforced absence from the company, I was struck by Brady Phillips' debut for PCW. I'll tell you what, that was one good decision the buyout made, was bringing in this young man, and he was victorious over Dave Graves. Very, very impressive indeed. There's a young man who had an interesting 12 months where the buyout was concerned, that's for sure. He's, 
stood up to the buyout. He was forced to join them. And then he turned on them and he lost his job. And he was reinstated. And then, to cap it all, one of his friends and fellow PCW Academy graduates, well, kicked him in the nuts. That was Philip Michael's year. How is this year going to go for this young man from Accrington? Well, if he continues on that same lucky streak that he's been going through, fluky, that's how I would describe his year. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm interested to see whether that year has changed Philip Michael, because he did endure more than a young man should have to endure, certainly at the hands of Sheikh El Sham and his coho cohorts, but he rebounded to qualify for the PCW Cruiserweight Tournament with that win over AC Stryker. It's just what AC Stryker did to him afterwards. Nobody could believe it. Well, it's a risky run. Obviously, he's got under the skin of Stryker, and you know, these sort of things happen. I can understand, he irritates the life out of me. Well, it was very much out of character for AC Stryker, and I'd be really interested to hear what AC Stryker has to say as by way of an explanation. But Philip Michael, in the meantime, has got to deal with Brady Phillips, a very impressive-looking individual. Let me tell you, this young man has got all the tools to succeed. In shape, very athletic, great timing, extremely aggressive in the ring. He's got everything as Brady Phillips, including that, that kilt that he wears, which I've not been able to find out the, the reason behind that, have you? Comfortable. OK. I just thought there might be some kind of, I don't know, uh, oh, I'm reason, sorry. maybe? It, you're why, looking why for some, some sort of sentimental value? Like a, a ritual, but he wears that for some sort of good fortune to get the will of the gods behind him. No, nothing like that at all. It's just merely, it, it's comfortable to wrestling. If Brady Phillips can do what he likes, Brady Phillips, who was brought in as part of the buyout talent initiative. Yeah, OK. I know you, you like to uh, harken back to those halcyon days, don't yeah, you? Yeah, when you could do what you, what you could do what you want, you could bully poor Tom McManus, but it ain't happening now, Sunshine. I have to say, though, I'm going to mention Tom. Big shout out to Tom, he did a fantastic job. An absolutely fantastic job in my absence. I want him back. In the meantime, we're really Phillips just showing that uh, he's got the measure of Philip Michael. Now, this is going to be interesting for me because I've always said that Philip Michael is incredibly assiduous. He is a student of the game. He will adapt. But I'll tell you what, that's exactly the sort of wrestler that Brady Phillips is as well. So this is going to be interesting. How do you, how do you learn from someone who's also trying to learn from your style? I think it's interesting as well that Philip Michael has actually appeared to have bulked up a little bit. He's been clearly spending a lot of time in the gym, still within the cruiserweight limit, of course, for that cruiserweight tournament that's coming up for the vacant championship. But perhaps this will help him against a bigger opponent in Brady Phillips. And indeed it is, because he's still got that great technical skill. He'll always have that, the speed, the nous, the knowledge from watching years of the greats of British wrestling. He is a Matt Maestro, Philip Michael, and still only 21 years old. But let's just see if he can maintain that. He managed to do so with that headlock. Brady Phillips using that extra mass. Look at that, that shoulder block from oh, Philip Michael did not off. knock Philip Phillips off his feet. But that did. Yeah. The situation, if I can use one of your words, leg sweep there from Philip Michael. You may, this one. Oh! I'll tell you what, Philip Michael's bang on his game. He is continuing the momentum. And that victory over AC Stryker, which saw him qualify for the Cruiserweight Tournament. Right here against Brady Phillips. Very impressive from the Lancastrian. Straight back on top of him as well. So this is, you know, this is smart wrestling from Philip Michael. Right now outside the ring, Philip Michael determined to stand up for himself. And this is the difference in Philip Michael, you see. This is what I was talking about. The ordeal that he went through has changed this young man for the better. See that, but just a, a lot of experience there from Brady Phillips as he just broke up that count by sliding into the ring and back out. Starting that, oh, he's got a chair. He starts that count from scratch. He's got a little more tight to dish out some punishment outside the ring, but that's, that's been turned on its head. Certainly has. Philip Michael brawling with an absolute belief, a lot more belief than we've seen in the past. I'm really impressed with how Philip Michael has set his stall out in the early going here against a dangerous opponent. He's got Brady Phillips there sat exactly where he wants him. He's setting up another chair. What's he going to do, Stallion? 
Surely I've ever seen Philip Michael do this before. How oh, about that? One chair into the other, rolling sent on outside the ring. The crowd goes wild for Philip Michael. And look at him just basking in the adoration of the fans out there. I think he spilled somebody's chips while he's wandering about out there. Are we looking at the next PCW Cruiserweight champion, Stanley? That's the question. In which one? Well, Brady Phillips isn't the Cruiserweight. Fight. Oh. Oh. He has that weight advantage in this catchweight contest, but at the moment you wouldn't know it. Phillips, though, at last is using that weight advantage, throwing some big forearm shots. Back comes Philip Michael with an enziguri from the ring apron. Oh, but there you go. Smart, evasive wrestling there from Brady Phillips, and Michael's early momentum has come to a crushing halt. Very much so, and I'll tell you what, look at what he's doing. He's not going for glory or anything like that. He realizes that a count out is just the same as any victory in a non-title match. He will go down in history as the victor here. Absolutely, you win the match, you get more money. It's that simple, and that's what it's all about. That and glory. Oh. And, and well, hurting your opponent as well, I think, in Brady Phillips' case, because he's just thrown Philip Michael into a pile of chairs. And Brady. Philip may be hurt, he may be hurt. Well, it's the risk you take when you step into the ring. And it's a nefarious action from Brady Phillips. And what he's very proud of, and he's telling the ref to count. Understands that, like, you know, like I said, a victory will count regardless, even if it's a count out. Indeed, and referee so Dave Atkins' small. count has reached eight. It's reached nine. Philip Michael breaks the count. And just in the nick of time. Brady Phillips right back on top of him though. Yeah, absolutely. Doesn't let him back to his feet. Dragging him up now. Say I'm very impressed. Oh, what's all his weight behind it? Absolutely, the powerhouse from Kettering. Almost bullying Philip Michael into a victory there. But Philip, we know he's got so much heart. He's displayed that time and time again. It's why the PCW fans love him so much. Well, you've got to respect what Philip Michael's been through, Stanley, and how he's I don't performed here this evening. Anything this away from his abilities. I don't take any anything away from that. His attitude stinks. What? Oh, he kicked out again there. I tell you what, Brady Phillips almost scoring the win, but what, I'm going to take you up on that. What do you mean, Philip Michael's attitude stinks? Well, look at this. You've gone through his year and gone, oh, look, he's got all these highs and lows. Nah, 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 nah. Right, and here's what I see when I look at Philip Michael. He wouldn't accept a decision, right? You've gone from the company. That's it, you're out. No, it has to come crawling back every single time. Doesn't take it like a man. He won a reinstatement match. Exactly. He got reinstated fair and square. So I'm sorry. Apology I'm not accepted. I'm standing for that. Brady Phillips. No apologies from him from his tactics so far. But look at that. How about that from Philip Michael? He caught it with like a rugby tackle, like a spear. Almost there, yeah, and I've never seen that from Philip Michael before. This is what I mean, this is a new Philip Michael. Bigger, stronger, faster, tougher. With cruiserweight gold on his mind. That is what he's focused on. Not looking past the threat of Brady Phillips whatsoever. <laughs> Big end to Gehrig to the back of the head from Philip Michael. Look at this now. Up he goes. Philip's able to evade, evade him, but how about this? He's going to try and hit, he's going to hit this satellite DDT. This could be it for Philip Michael to defeat Brady Phillips, but no, Phillips kicking Solid, out again. Solidly planted him there, but... Still, Brady Phillips just showing that wherewithal to be able to kick out at this point. What impressed me there is I thought Philip Michael was just trying to use the middle rope for a bit of leverage. He didn't quite get his feet in position, but he still adjusted and hit the DDT and hit perfectly. How about that though? Rolling cradle from Brady Phillips. Oh, once again, just a two. Michael 
Spinning Savat kick. What's this, pile driver perhaps? Almost completed it. Again, a move we don't often see from Philip. Roll through into the sunset, flip shoulders down, two count only again. What a great match we're seeing here. This is the kind of action you'll see on PCW TV and a sit-out powerbomb almost brings Philip Michael the win. Well, I'll tell you what, this is the thing with these two. Both of them have similar styles in the fact that they both try to feel out the opponent and try to outdo each other and learn from each other. How has Philip Michael adjusted to that? Well, he's bringing out all of these moves we've never seen him use. Oh, we've seen him use the, the, the East Lang special, but that's more of a cross face from the submission specialist, Philip Michael. And he's got Brady Phillips right in the middle of the ring. Brady this, Phillips has just got nowhere to go no, right now. He's, absolutely not. He's literally right in the middle, and, and no matter how he crawls, I just don't think he's going to be able to get those ropes. So. I'll tell you what, though. Brady Phillips has got a lot of upper body power and he's made the ropes and you've got to give him credit for that. Oh, very much so. But it's taken its toll, look at that. Force the break. Brady Phillips just taking a little bit of a break. And I think he needs it right now, just recharge his batteries and see what he can come up with in the way of the game plan and take out Philip Michael. Oh, Philip, I tell you what, Brady Phillips has shown a lot of ring generalship in this match. He's used every part of the ring to his advantage. He did so again there. Big springboard kick. The athleticism we talked about from this all-rounder, but he still can't beat the gutsy Philip Michael. Uh, and look at it though, he's, he's not getting on top, he's getting himself frustrated. What he needs is to get back and just continue to pound on Philip Michael. He's taking too long. Too long, in my opinion. Doing now, he's dragging him to the centre, and Philip Michael recovering. Philip Michael kicks Brady Phillips off, catches him in an inside cradle, but Phillips rolls through. But Philip Michael rolled through. Who's going to get the oh! suplex? Oh! I'll tell you what, they both went outside the ring. Well, that was shades of the dynamite kid. Who's to the dynamite kid do that? The British wrestling legend, the suplex from inside the ring to the outside with both men going over. And that is incredibly dangerous. Incredibly dangerous. Both men are down right now on the, on the far side of the ring. And the referee checking in with them. That can cause a serious injury. What a match we are seeing. Referee getting plenty of counting practice in in this match. What are we up to? Oh, they both beat the count again. Just beat the count. That was almost a double count out. There can't be too much left in the tank for either of these two young men. They have thrown everything at each other. You wouldn't have thought so. It's now going to go down to a battle of attrition. On their knees. Face to face, exchanging forearms. I'll tell you what, there's a lot more steam behind those shots. As Philip Michael, the boy, growing into a man here before our very eyes. Another big head kick. Back comes Brady Phillips, oh. takes him over. How about that? Hurricane Rana, Philip Michael dazed. Into the corner, takes a big flying elbow into the face. Brady Phillips is moving in for the kill. Hits him with a suplex onto the knee, hooks the leg tight with his back across Philip Michael's chest and he still can't beat him. Unbelievable resilience. Isn't it just, but Phillips or stays with the momentum there. Snake eyes, clothesline, cover, jackknife cradle. Surely this is it. No, it's not. I don't believe it. What has Philip Michael got there? He's kicking out of absolutely everything. His desire to win. The fire is burning inside the belly of Philip Michael right now. And everything that he's been through has developed him into what we are seeing right now. Well, perhaps so. Brady Phillips is going to have to find a way to counter that. Brady Phillips with a short clothesline. He's surely got a feel 
but he's got Philip Michael beat because all the adulation we've given to Philip Michael in this match, we can also say about Brady Phillips. He has been impressive, relentless. Looking now to take Philip Michael out with a series of short clotheslines. He's going to look for a third, perhaps. No, he decides to bounce off the ropes instead. What's Philip Michael going for? Takes it down. East legs. He's got the East legs special. Has he got the arm hooked? He's got the head hooked. Brady Phillips right in the centre of the ring. There it is. He got the arm. He's got the arm hooked. Brady Phillips has tapped out. Philip Michael wins. What a match we have been treated to on PCW television. And more importantly than that, after an incredible performance from Brady Phillips, what a rite of passage we have seen in the young career of one Philip Michael. Well, you asked how his year is going to start off. Well, we've just seen it, a win against an incredible, credible opponent in Brady Phillips. Brady Phillips brought everything out there, tried to learn in that similar style to Philip Michael, then threw everything he had at him. Still wasn't enough, and Philip Michael just absorbed every bit of punishment, every move, every blow, and managed to come out with a victory. And he's starting 2020 off with a bang.